Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I finally have a collection update video to share with you guys. This is going to be a very long video. So sit back, relax, grab a snack, grab a drink. I'm gonna be going through everything in my collection right now. This is definitely the single most requested video on my channel. Uh, it's been a while since I've done an update and I have a bunch of new stuff. I'm not gonna waste too much time with the intro here. Uh, I'm gonna try and keep this moving quickly. So I'm gonna talk about the knives briefly. If there's a little bit of a backstory, you know, I'll talk about it, but we're gonna keep it moving here. I'm gonna start off with this first case here as we progress. Rest, the knives definitely get more crazy, more expensive, more exotic over in this case here. There's a lot of cool stuff. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, starting off here with the green slotted case. By the way, these are Pelican 1450 cases with Nalpak foam cut specifically for knives. That's N-A-L-P-A-K. If you guys are interested in checking these out for yourselves, they are awesome for knife storage and organization. Starting off here with the Kershaw Blur in S30V. The Kershaw Blur is kind of the knife that started it all for me uh, 12, 13 years ago, maybe 14 years ago now. Um, this particular one is not my first one. It's actually the one that I bought for my wife because it just kind of works out well. Uh, she doesn't carry it though. It sits down here in my collection. This is S30V and aluminum assisted, but definitely a good USA choice. Moving on here, we have, of course, the Civivi Conspirator, uh, a great, uh, fairly low cost uh, button lock knife. I can't remember what the steel is on this guy. I just kind of get it's Nitro V. Yeah, uh, definitely a good option. I like this one a lot. We've got another Civivi. This is the Civivi Crowley. It's just a newer offering from Civivi, a little bit slimmer profile. And I think these guys are actually in 14C28. And it's really hard to see. No, these are in D2, I guess. I don't know. It's hard to remember all this stuff, right? Moving on here, we have the Cold Steel Code 4. This is a, a little bit of a rare one in CTS XHP. Uh, Tanto configuration, definitely like this knife. Don't use it a lot though. Uh, moving on here, this was a gift for my wife, actually my most recent anniversary gift for my wife. This is a ProTech TR3, which I can't believe after all this time that I did not have this thing. Uh, in my collection already, but uh, you know, she does a really good job when she picks out gifts. Another ProTech, this one definitely on the rare side. This is a Titanium Automatic uh, ProTech and Strider SNG. These were from a long time ago. This is number two of 40, 154 CM. Definitely, definitely a really cool knife. One that I'll probably never get rid of. Next up, we have my very first pocket knife. This was uh, recently restored by a group of amazing people in the knife community. We can actually read this now. Camillus, New York, and is it 7-0? This, to my knowledge, was my grandpa's, and then it was my dad's, and then it was mine. Uh, this knife uh, was taken away from me many times as a kid. I actually lost the original scale on the back, and they replaced it. And I think, you know what? It kind of gives it some character, but this has been beautifully restored. It was basically all brown. <laughs> <laughs> the blades were the same color as the scale before it was restored. So thank you to the people who helped out with that. Moving on here, another Civivi that I really like. Um, this is the uh, Civivi, um, what do they call it? The Chevalier. It was a hard one to remember. Probably my favorite button lock from Civivi. Definitely a really good one. Also, uh, nice price on that. Nothing that's too crazy. Next up, if I can get my Fingers all the way in there, we have the uh, Wee Banter. This one was actually given to me by Ben Peterson himself. So I'm really happy to have this guy in the collection. Definitely a great little EC knife. Next up, we have the Miguron Velona, which is one of the very best budget knives in existence when we're talking about materials and overall execution. This is a beautiful knife. I'm really happy to have the satin one in um, 14C28N. The next thing we're gonna look at here is the Wii and Snex Vision R. Definitely one that I had to keep. I really, uh, really, really like the uh, black and bronze setup on this guy and that, um, that lock back there is just awesome. It's really fun to uh, manipulate. Moving on here, we have the uh, Chavez Redemption 229. Definitely one that I really enjoy the aesthetic of. This is back before they did um, both the skull clip and the standard clip. Just like this guy, big chunky sort of brick of a knife. Moving on here, we have <laughs> the Berg Blades Iron Wolf, which I, I wanted for a long time. I remember seeing it and realizing, you know, that these 
were, you know, just out of stock and they were only doing the iron pups. And I said, man, if they ever do another run of the iron wolf, I'm going to grab one. And they did. So I grabbed it. Next up, we have the uh, Sencut Saxi, I think is how you pronounce this guy. Um, these are probably the best value. Like if we're talking about, you know, just if you really want a nice button lock knife uh, and you, you need one that's a really good value, I think these are some of the least expensive with the best execution out there. Uh, had to keep this one, absolutely. Moving on here, uh, we have the Microtech SOCOM Elite. This is the one that is made in the United States. Definitely the one, it's the manual one, the one that um, you know people are always after. This was also a gift for my wife, uh, an, an anniversary gift. If you guys don't know, my wife buys me a, uh, a knife every year for our anniversary. Next up, we have the more recent Microtech and Rike socom bravo which i also very much like these are the ones that are made by reich in china but it is an authorized collaboration and not a clone you will not find a single clone or unauthorized reproduction in my collection next up we have uh the cold steel 8010 tanto i really like the 8010 i'm a big fan of demco knives and when they released this thing in the um tanto configuration i was like yeah i've got to have that this one's in S35VN. Uh, I think they make a light version in AUS 10A or something like that. Definitely a nice, big, robust knife for sure. Sorry about that. Next up, we have the Reich 1902, I believe. I think that's what this is. Yeah, this is 1902. Definitely the first example of a Reich. Uh, this was the one that made me realize, holy crap, Reich can really make an incredible knife. This was actually a gift um, from a patron a while back. So very to ha happy to have that one. And uh, won't be uh, won't be letting go of it anytime soon. Next up, we have the uh, Dan Carraher 904 Integral. This was another gift from an awesome friend. Uh, a gift uh, for the channel, actually. It's uh, got the Metal Complex logo on it and the um, my other Metal Complex logo on the other side. This is one um, that I really enjoy carrying. Like when I just want to carry an Integral knife, and when I mean Integral, I mean the handle scales are all one piece titanium. This is definitely the one that I reach for, not just because it's got my logos on it and it's got a cool story behind it, but because it's a really good size. I just enjoy uh, carrying one that's a little bit more compact. I've got a lot of big knives in my collection. Speaking of big knives, um, this is the <laughs> the uh, 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 Guardian Tactical. Sorry, it's a lot of knife information bouncing around in my head. Guardian Tactical Recon 40 OTF. This is definitely my biggest overall double action OTF. USA made the best switch in the industry because it's got a steel plate and it runs on bearings. This thing is amazing. Equally amazing is its little brother, the 35. I'm ashamed to say I do not currently have a 35 in my collection, but I need to get one. Moving on here. <laughs> this is one of my favorite budget button locks just because of the size and the look of it and everything. This is a all steel construction CJRB Pyrite. Um, the uh, blade steel is AR RPM9, so it's powder formed. I just like the steel handle. I think these come in or they're going to come in at like 50 bucks. Uh, I got mine direct from CGRB so that I could uh, do a review on it. Um, so really, uh, really happy to have that one for sure. Next up, I have a Blade Shops version of the Spyderco Capara. It's literally a Capara that has been shortened up by Blade Shops. You can check him out on Instagram. Also one that I very much enjoy EDCing just because of the size of it. The Capara itself is a fantastic option you know even with it being as big as it is i just really this blade jobs version that's a little shorter is just really cool uh next up we have the blade hq exclusive spider co smock and i think it's titanium nitride coated cpm m4 um and then we have the jade scales and the black hardware etc i love the smock it's one of my favorite spider co's i just knew you know if i was going to pick one up i'd have to pick up you know, it's kind of a special one, so. All right, moving on here, we have the Christensen Knife Works Maverick S. This particular version has the Zerka Tie pivot collar, Zerka Tie pocket clip, and I think, this, I think the thumb studs are actually, yeah, they're also Zerka Tie. Really cool, right? Straightforward, nice sort of minimalist aesthetic, but it's got those nice accents. I couldn't resist that. Moving on here, another channel gift from some amazing people. This is a... Uh, Chris Reeve, Umnum Zahn. This is actually my only Chris Reeve. And I know a lot of people are going to go, what? You're a you know crazy knife collector and this is your only... 
really like the Sabenz is meh. it's cool right it's got it's got great history right I, re I respect it I respect the person behind it obviously the father of the frame lock uh Chris Reeve uh I like the Inkosi uh the Umnum Zahn is absolutely far and away my favorite knife in um the uh the Chris Reeve lineup it says Metal Complex from your 100,000 friends this was when the channel reached 100,000 subscribers I am eternally grateful for that one very cool I'll never let that one go Moving on here, uh, again, uh, definitely uh, one that I very much enjoy. Um, this is the Vero Engineering Synapse XL. It was not originally purchased with the Timascus Clip and Backspacer. I had a buddy um, say, hey, I've got a set if you want to, uh, if you want to you know, buy it from me and install it in yours. And I said, absolutely, let's go for it. So very cool. I've been EDCing this one a lot more lately. Speaking of a knife that I EDC a lot, of course, Always talk, since the beginning of the channel, I've talked about how much I love this knife, the Les George VECP V3, and it looks like such a basic folder, uh, full, uh, you know, USA uh, manufactured knife, very cool. This is the mid-tech version, not the custom, um, but just love it. Phosphor bronze, some of the smoothest phosphor bronze action um, in my collection for sure. Just very simple construction, really easy to maintain, CTS XHP steel, full titanium. Only thing that would make it better is some texturing on the titanium, would love that. Another knife that I carry a lot, uh, my Microtech Ultratech. This one has definitely seen um, more uh, use than some of the other OTFs in my collection, but it's just a nice size, right? I like the slim profile, very cool. Moving on here, we have uh, my original, this is actually my original Spyderco Shaman, um, which has green scales. These are the scales that come uh, with the River's Edge Cutlery exclusive Shavocado version, but I took them off because I customized it and I thought, well, I'll just put them on the original Shaman. Why not, right? Uh, so there we go. Moving on here, um, this is the Gathering Edition uh, version of the Protec uh, Invictus, the PDW, the Prometheus Design Works Invictus. This is the automatic version. The standard version comes with a red firing button, this one is green. <laughs> I like that. I couldn't resist this. This was more, I, it was quite a bit more literally just to get the green firing switch, which is, eh. but I, uh, <laughs> I couldn't help it. I like green. I had to go for it. I have a, a low number of green knives in my collection for how much I enjoy green. This is the Urban EDC Supply F 5.5 with the Sagaya pattern, which I very much enjoy. Uh, just because I like textured titanium so much. Another really great EDC option. It's just, you know, a nice size. I love the fact that it's a liner lock and not a frame lock. I've got so many exposed frame locks, so it's nice to have one um, that is, um, you know, just a liner lock. Very cool. Uh, we have the Tactile Knife Co. Rock Wall. This one in textured titanium and Magna Cut. Also a knife that I carry, you know, if I'm wearing uh, dress pants or something like that, this is one of the knives that I'll reach for just because of its slimmer construction. We have the new Microtech and Reich uh, Anax, which is also a knife that I really enjoy carrying. Um, this is the one that I just could not get centered. And, you know, initially it kind of bothered me. And it, I mean, it still kind of does, but I, anymore I'm just kind of like, whatever, you know. It's nice. Um, it's It can be a little bit awkward at times since your only options for deployment or the front flipper, or this gigantic fuller thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it overall is a nice carry. I am not a fan of attaching those gigantic metal dingly danglies on the back there. Moving on, we have uh, definitely a rare knife. This is a ZT0392. Originally, it was a um, BWBRZ, so it had bronze hardware. This had been used quite a bit before I bought it secondary. And, um, you know, the guy told me, he's like, it's a user. He has resharpened it. Uh, I've resharpened it because I, I like to carry and use it a lot. Um, but uh, I, I just took the bronze hardware out and just added some Eclipse, like some regular Eclipse hardware. So um, definitely enjoy this one. It also has taco bearings in it now. Um, the original bearings were okay. These are a little bit better. Um, I'd like to try Skiff at some point. Moving on here, another gift for my wife. This is usually the one I'll reach for for dinner dates or just more, you know, like events where I'm not wearing jeans, right? Slimmer profile, I like the titanium look, and I like the uh, VG10 um, clad. Well, I think actually the core is, it's, it's San Mai, right? But a VG10 core. Really cool, real classy. Love that one. Next up, a knife that always gets people... 
<laughs> Fired up. How did you get that? Uh, the Titanium TRM Shadow. Yeah. Uh, really happy to get this one. I got this direct from TRM. Um, very cool. I don't carry this one. I just enjoy having it, right? Moving on here, another gift to the channel. Uh, we have the uh, Benchmade Mini Crooked River. This was a gift from a friend a long time ago who built it on the custom shop, just sort of um, with, uh, you know, the, the the colors of the channel, right? The blue and the silver uh, kind of matches my logo. Really, really cool. This is also one that I like to EDC fairly often. Uh, next up, we have the ProTech Godfather in the uh, Sapphire. I, I think they list it as DLC. I think it's Truthfully, I think it's a it's a PVD. Really cool. I wish that they would do more of these. This is so awesome. It's not just color that's like, oh, wow, pretty. It actually offers corrosion resistance. It's a true PVD. Uh, very cool. It has the abalone. I always forget if it's abalone or abalone. I don't know. Whatever. I like that one. It's cool. Uh, the very first gift for my wife. This is the uh, Lion Steel TRE Titanium. This is one that has been carried uh, a lot. The Anno is actually starting to wear off the clip. Uh, we have a Protec Malibu. I kept this one. I've had a few different Malibus. This is textured, and it has the reverse Tanto blade, right? You know, people are going to call that different things. That's fine. Um, but the texturing, mainly the all black and the texturing was the reason that I wanted to pick this one up. So very cool. Not really a knife that gets carried all that much. That's it for the green case. We're going to move on to some stuff kind of in between cases here. All right. So everything you're seeing here consists of knives that I use for size comparisons in uh, regular reviews on my channel. Um, I've also got some of my fixed blades over here. I'm not really much of a fixed blade guy, but I do have a few. And then I also have a bunch of overbuilt knives that are so gigantic that they won't fit in my regular cases. So I have a new case that's built specifically for overbuilt knives. It's just not here yet. So they're just kind of laying around. Let's start off here with a knife that I have in my collection just because sometimes I need to compare things to it. This is the uh, OpenL number eight. I don't really like this knife. If you like it, that's great. I don't really care for it, but there you go. Then I have one that I really like, and that's the uh, hilariously oversized OpenL Number 13, that is like a small baseball bat with a gigantic blade in it. This is almost a machete. Um, I have yet to do a review on this. <laughs> it's just a weird thing to have, but uh, I think I'll keep it. Um, let's see here. Moving on, uh, we have the uh, Chickadee, which is a uh, custom fixed blade made by, um, I think his name is Jacob Creates on Instagram. Sorry, that's a really... I love this little thing. Um, this is just a little EDC fixed blade, and uh, it's the type of fixed blade that I actually enjoy carrying. This um, entire sheath will fit in my pocket, which I like. But um, yeah, I like this one for just general EDC. Uh, of course, we have the Spyderco Para 3, which is outfitted with some RGT skinny micarta scales and the MXG deep carry clip. We have the legendary... Uh, Ritter Hogue RSK MK1 G2 or Mach 1 G2. This is a Knifeworks exclusive. We have the Benchmade Bugout, which I built on the custom shop. Actually, Benchmade built me one and sent it to me. Um, this is in S90V, green studs. And then I actually have titanium, titanium scales on it because I, I just like how they look. We have the Ontario Rat Model 1, which is... Uh, I feel like almost everybody owns that knife in the Ontario Rat Model 2. Also a knife that probably everybody owns. This is a Civivi Elementum that Civivi uh, and we actually made for me um, and put the, uh, the logo on there. Another knife that was sent to me by Ben Peterson, and that's the Baby Banter, um, which is really cool. This is probably my favorite travel knife, um, so I definitely want to keep that around. Another knife that I like to travel with is the CJRB Rhea. Uh, very inexpensive, very slim profile. It's just a nice one. We have the Demco AD 20.5 in titanium and 3V that is uh, smooth on the scale. This one has definitely seen uh, some pocket time and some use. It's the one that I keep down here for size comparisons. And then another one, uh, it's the exact same thing, except it is textured. These are the ones that are made in Taiwan. Um, both of them are shark's foot. Um, I have another one in drop point. We'll get to that here in just a little bit, but I like the shark's foot for EDC. This has the Lynch deep carry clip on it, which is not a perfect clip, but I like it more than the stock clip. Um, yeah, these are wonderful. These are 
I EDC this knife like more than anything. Then of course, also I have a Spyderco PM2 that uh, used for size comparisons. It's also got um, flytanium scales. We have, this is the knife I, I, I keep in my truck. Um, it does not really get used, but I've got it there if I need it. Uh, this is a Becker BK2, just a gigantic hulking fixed blade. I, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of different fixed blades I could keep in there that would, you know, just do really, really well. I don't know why it's not wanting to go back in the sheet. There we go. Um, but uh, this is the one that I keep in there. Another one that I'll probably beat on down the road, the Cold Steel uh, SRK. This is the, the bigger guy. Uh, very inexpensive. This is, I mean, it's, it's one of the ultimate beater fixed blades. And I just haven't gotten around to using it yet, but I liked it, so I went ahead and picked it up. All right, next up is uh, an example of a knife um, that, uh, you know, is making me want to buy another case. Um, this is a USA-made knife uh, made by Chapman Lake Knives. Uh, very nice, very high quality. Um, they actually had this, uh, they made this for me um, with the Metal Complex logo on it. It's a button lock knife. Kind of a, you know, a strange looking profile. You guys may not have seen me unbox this on the channel yet, um, but it has that cool blue to purple anno. It's definitely unique, it's different. Um, but the overall quality and execution is really, really good. Um, and it's sitting in its case right now, which is kind of hard to get it out of. Next up, let's look at some of these overbuilt gigantic fat boys here that won't fit in the case. Um, this is one that I um, just uh, recently acquired um, from a viewer. This is the Midgard's Messer Viking, which is an absolutely titanic folding knife. It is way too big and way too thick to fit um, in those slots there. This was available a long time ago, and honestly, I don't think it was really all that expensive. And I, when I say that, I mean versus some of the other stuff that I regularly buy. I just, you know, overlooked it. And by the time I wanted to buy it, it was gone. So when I finally had a viewer send one in, I said, hey, if you ever want to sell this, let me know. And he said, sure. So I picked it up. Uh, very cool. I uh, definitely, this was one of the knives that, uh, you know, kind of inspired the, um, <laughs> the one for a larger uh, overbuilt specific case. Uh, moving on here, we have another uh, Midgard's Messer knife. This is actually a newer one here. This is the Thunrar. And again, it is way too thick to fit in uh, you know, a regular, uh, my regular case. This looks like it's really short and stumpy. It's actually eight inches overall. The blade is co close to uh, a quarter inch. Sorry, the camera's not wanting to focus on it. And the scales are also uh, about a quarter inch. I think that's like 0.24 or something. Crazy, big, hulking titanium uh, frame lock. It has that secondary pin lock that you can use if you want to make it like ultra strong. I don't know. I just really like these big, crazy, chunky tanks. I think they're awesome. Midgard's Messer just makes some really cool knives. And then uh, this is a special one. Um, this is one that I was really surprised that they wanted to give this one to me. This is from the actual um, uh, maker and designer of Midgard's Messer. This is uh, the Beowulf which, you know, I'm sure some of you guys might actually have. This is, uh, right there we can see, number one of 250. I was really, really honored. I didn't expect that they wanted to give me this, but this is another gigantic, just freakishly thick. It has this, it actually has two secondary locks, one here, and then it's got the pin. Um, but it's just a big, crazy, chunky, meaty knife, and uh, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, now, believe it or not, these are not my biggest, thickest, craziest knives. I have uh, two that are thicker and heavier than those two. Um, let's see here. Um, the uh, Yeah, it's this one. Uh, this is the PMP Alpha Beast, which is close to half an inch. I think it's 0.4. <laughs> yeah. I have I made quite a big deal uh, about these uh, on social media. Uh, it's these are ridiculous. The action is I mean it's mainly due to how you know gigantic the blade is, but these are just absolutely hulking knives. Um, these currently are not available. They were originally uh, it was a pre order through Tools for Gents. They were about you know I got mine a long time ago and the price wasn't as bad because the conversion from euros to dollars was not as crazy. It's a lot more crazy now. I think I picked mine up for a little less than 400. I think now, you know, they when they were available, they went for like 500. So, uh, yeah, uh, those are those are nuts. I'm sure that PMP will do more crazy overbuilt knives in the future. And then I also have a special one. 
This is also a PMP Alpha Beast. Um, they made, by the way, if you want to see here, they made 280 PMP Alpha Beasts. This is number 70. These guys are in D2. This guy is one of five that were ever made in Damasteel. Uh, and that's not uh, just uh, regular old, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, not super familiar with this territory in the knife world, Damasteel is proprietary. It's made of two very specific powder form steels by the Damasteel company and is absolutely made for performance. Despite the irony of this blade being way too thick, for any level of convenient cutting. The whole reason I have this is not because I'm like, oh, I, you know, I, I have a knife that's more capable than any other. No, I have it because it's ridiculous. I think it's just an insane and amazing object, which is the same, the same could be said for a lot of the stuff in my collection. I don't necessarily collect knives that I think are ultra utilitarian in an infinite number of circumstances. I just really like them because they're weird and have character, right? Uh, oversized thumb studs, everything. It's just, this is just an absolutely titanic and ridiculous knife. It has a, uh, Mokume, uh, or wait, is it Mokume or is it Timascus? I can't remember. I think it's Mokume, um, pocket clip there. So yeah, I think that's everything in this bunch. So now we're going to transition into the final case, which definitely has some of the crazier, you know, stuff in it. So here we go.